Good morning. Today we're going to be taking a look at a perfectly elastic collision. Now a perfectly elastic collision is where all of the kinetic energy and all of the potential energy and the potential energy of those compressed molecules during impact is going to be conserved before and after the collision. So not only are we able to use the conservation of momentum, we're also going to be able to use the conservation of energy where all of the potential energy and kinetic energy prior to the collision is going to be equal to all of the potential energy and kinetic energy after the collision. Now the problem we're going to be taking a look at is a simple marble problem where we have a 50 gram marble moving at 2 meters per second it strikes a 20 gram marble at rest. What is the speed of each marble immediately after the collision. So let's go take a look at how we're going to do this. So the very first thing we want to do is change the representation. So we're just going to draw a sketch instead of looking at all those crazy words. So we have a 50 gram marble. This will be our 50 gram marble. And we'll call this marble A. And the 50 gram marble is moving at 2 meters per second. And it strikes a 20 gram marble. And that marble is just chilling out here. He's, he's like, yeah, dude, what's up? I'm just hanging out. I'm at rest. Okay, so if we know he's at rest, then rest, to me, as soon as I hear that, I think, oh, his velocity is zero. And the question is, what is the speed? and the speed is just going to be the magnitude of that velocity before and or I'm sorry after the collision of both of those marbles so what we're looking for is the velocity of a and b after the collision or finally well I know before right before and right after any collision our momentum is conserved so the momentum of marble A initially is the mass of A times the velocity of A initially or pre-impact plus the momentum of marble B because that's going to be our system. Our system is going to be both marbles. So if that's going to be our system before, it must be our system afterwards. So here's the velocity of B initially, and I don't really need to put it initially on the mass because in this case it is going to be staying the same. We're not losing or gaining any pieces to our marbles. So in this case, this is going to be the equation that we use for the conservation of momentum. I'm just going to double check my subscripts there. Now I'm just going to plug in what I know. At this point I'm going to simplify it as much as possible. I am going to drop my units just to be consistent. I did not convert grams to kilograms and the only reason is I'm not dealing with newtons or any force and as long as all of the masses are the same in conservation of momentum I'm going to be okay. Now here's where some of us will start to panic. We'll be like, oh my goodness, ah. And when people panic, we do one of two things. Some students cry, some students um, freak out, some students get angry, other students just give up. I prefer it if instead of doing any of those things, you just keep moving forward. So again, I told you earlier that the conservation of mechanical energy also applies. So if we can't go any further with this equation, let's just kind of put it on the back burner, not worry about it, and take a look at the conservation of mechanical energy. Now, I know I don't have any potential energy happening here because, well, there is potential energy, uh, but I don't have any potential energy changes. So because I the gravitational potential energy of the marbles here is going to be exactly the same as the marbles after impact I'm not even going to include them in my equation so in my equation I have the kinetic energy of my system before and like I just said I don't even have to include potential energy because there is no energy changes is going to be equal to the kinetic energy of my system afterwards. Well, I have two objects in my system. So my equation is going to be the mass, one half the mass of marble A times the velocity of marble A initially squared. And the same thing for marble B. 
initially and that's going to be equal to the kinetic energy of those two marbles after impact. And now I'm just going to plug in my different variables. At this point, I am left with basically the same thing. I'm left with an equation with two unknowns. Now, before I start to panic, I'm going to step back and I'm going to take a look at this puzzle to see if any of these puzzle pieces fit together. Well, I see here my two unknowns in this equation is the final velocity of marble A and the final velocity of marble B. And the two unknowns I have in this equation are exactly the same. So at this point, I'm going to do my little happy dance. I'm going to be like, whoop, 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 whoop. That's my little, that's the uh, first happy dance right there. Whoop, whoop. All right. Woo. Let's get our groove on. Okay, so I'm doing my happy dance because I know I'm going to be able to solve two equations for two unknowns. So I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite my two equations and two unknowns. And see, actually, first, let me take this guy here. I'm going to take him and I'm going to solve him in terms of one variable and plug it into here. So let me just rewrite this. So there are the two equations that we need to solve for simultaneously. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I don't know, it looks like it's going to be easier to solve this equation in terms of one variable. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And the final velocity of our B marble is going to be 2.9 meters per second. Notice how they both, after the collision, are moving to the right as well. We know that because they're both positive. There you have it. Any questions you have or you have your own physics problems, comment below. And I'll be talking to you later. Make it a great day.